In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked. For you are my hope, O Lord God. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. The second lesson is a reading from Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part, but when the complete comes, the partial will come to, the, to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part that I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to Christ. Jesus began to speak in the synagogue at Nazareth. Today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb. Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet, Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elijah, and none of them was clean except Naaman, the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of town, led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Widow. 
who happens to be a Gentile, who happens to be a non-Jew. Even more dramatically, who happens to live over there on that side of the tracks. And then, with pinpoint accuracy, Jesus says, not only were there many, many widows among you, but God chose one. God also chose, though there were many, many lepers among you, one. Again, an outsider. Both widows and lepers had been systemically excluded from Jewish society and culture and the Son of God. In fact, both have been excluded because you see, in Jesus' day, until the breaking in of Christ, being a widow and being a leper were both manifestations of God's anger. What did he say that made people angry enough to kill him? That God, in fact, doesn't hate these people, these widows and these lepers. In fact, they are the recipients of God's unparalleled love and grace. It's as if Jesus is saying, if God is anywhere, he is with the widows and the lepers. Jesus returns to Nazareth, preaches in his home church. He infuriates his old friends and relations with intentionality. There's one thing that we know about Jesus, he doesn't hold back. He's in the face of each and every one of these who are gathered in the synagogue on that particular day. And he almost dies for it. You can't help but think, apparently it's true, you can't go home again. Within the space of a few sentences, graciousness and curiosity turns to contempt. In the space of just a few sentences, worship morphs into violence. There's more to the story, it's nuanced in many ways. Surely they must have thought. If their boy was willing to perform miracles, heal the sick, restore sight to the blind, to perfect strangers out there in Capernaum, he would even do more back here at home for all of us, among his people, among his insiders among his favorites. But they were wrong. It looks to me like this is the exact place where the story turns. When Jesus refuses to go home in ways that matter most to his family, his friends, his neighbors, his people. In fact, Jesus refuses to be at home. He refuses to stay at home. He refuses to allow his home 
to define him and his mission. Everything goes wrong when Jesus essentially says, I am not yours. I don't belong to you. I am not yours to claim, to contain, or control. And that's enough to bring them to the cliff. That's enough for them to want to push him over. <laughs> You know, as I thought deeply on the gospel reading this week, I had to remind myself to linger, to stay uncomfortably at this point of provocation. And for me, in my reading, Jesus is the one who pushes his own away in this story. His own friends, his own support network, those who have taught him in Sunday school, Sabbath school, those who have watched him grow up, those who were connected with his parents and his extended family. He pushes his very own away. He rejects their vision, their vision of welcome. He rejects their vision of hospitality. He rejects their vision of God's grace and God's love. Jesus is the one who overturns their notions of home and of God's place in it. You can't go home, he tells them. You can't hunker down and stay where you are expecting God to hang out with you. Because God is on the move. God is always doing a new thing. God is speaking in places you don't recognize as sacred. God is giving privilege to voices you're not interested in hearing. God is shedding light on those you refuse to even recognize. God is saying, Things that will make your ears burn. In fact, Jesus says, Can't handle it? That's because God is not yours. You are His. God is not yours. You is. There's a wonderful piece of our burial liturgy. I spoke the words found in the Book of Common Prayer this past week at Bob Durham's funeral. It is a reminder that God is not a stranger. God is my friend. There is a reminder. I am the Lord's possession. I don't own God. God possesses me. What does it mean for us to live into this story? To fully live into it? I believe it means that if the Jesus we worship never offends us, then it's not really Jesus we worship. Remember, the Jesus described in Luke's story pushed so hard against his listeners' cherished assumptions about faith, they tried to kill him. When was the last 
last time Jesus made you that angry? Jesus. When was the last time he touched whatever it is you call holy? Your holy politics, your holy beliefs, your holy traditions, your customs, your liturgy. And ask you to look beyond it. Fine. You know, we are, in fact, we, uh, you know, of course, I'm speaking now about the church. The church. We are the 21st century equivalent of Jesus' townspeople in Nazareth. Therefore, the church are the ones most in danger of domesticating Jesus, forcing him into some box. We're the ones most likely to miss him. And he shows up in places we don't recognize, that we don't revere. Or that we don't like. What will it take to follow him into new and uncomfortable territory? To see him where we least desire to look? When will we together decide to leave home? I know I refer quite often to Barbara Brown Taylor. I believe I mentioned her a couple of years ago. She writes about disillusionment as a good thing. She says, even though it's painful, disillusionment is critical, essential to the Christian life. Disillusion, disillusionment, she says, is literally the loss of an illusion. An illusion about ourselves, about the world, about God. Furthermore, she says, it's usually always painful to experience disillusionment. But it's never a bad thing, she suggests. To lose the lies we have mistaken for the truth. Luke's gospel calls us to disillusionment, it calls us to leave home, it calls us to find Jesus, it calls us to choose movement over being stuck in the good old days. In the familiar ways, it causes us to change. It causes us to let go of the way things were. So, where in my life do I try to kill the unfamiliar and the new? If I'm honest, it happens all the time. Instead of leaning into the not yet experienced, leaning into newness, and leaning into it with curiosity and delight, can we identify those places? Those are the places rich with joy. Stepping into those moments creates exuberance, not staleness, not predictability, but adventure. Adventure. You can't go home again. 
You can't stay. Because God is on the move. God is busy at the margins. God is doing new things. It's interesting that when they gathered, the women, that is, at the empty tomb on Easter morning, do you remember the words of the angels? To those gathered at the empty tomb, gazing into the darkness and the emptiness of it. The first word from God through an angel was the word, He is not here. He is gone. He is on his way to Galilee. Are you ready? Are you ready? I believe we are ready. Together. Let's continue the journey. Amen. Give us all the reverence for the earth 
and your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives, whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Join with me as we ask prayers, especially for Josh, Clark, Clark, William Jane, Mona, Michael, Jenny, Robert, <coughs> Carol, Diane, TK, Nancy, Pearl, Mary and Julie, Preston, Robert and Cindy, Barbara, Wade, Joe, Kendall, Mike, David, Stephen, Father, Brandon, John, Lisa, Buddy, Daniel, Ben, Brooke, Steve, Jenna, and Dennis. And also for Billy Taylor, and for all families and friends affected by COVID, especially the Wimberley family, Brian, Kimberly, Nora, We pray for those celebrating birthdays, Michael Major, Jimmy Walter, Sarah Robinson. For those celebrating anniversaries, Greg and Linda Smith. We pray for our animal friends, Henry, Buddy, General, Chopsy, and Leo. We ask your prayers for the staff and those incarcerated in Walton County Jail in Juniac Springs, Florida. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of their salvation. Lord, in your mercy, we command to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness. But as you know and love us, in your Son Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess our sins against you in the heart of the word and deed. I will be the better, and I will be the better than them. We may not love you with our whole heart. We are not loving our neighbors as ourselves. We are not truly sorry, and we shall not repent. But for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may abide in the world and walk in the way to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
I'm going to throw him off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> you may be saying, I'm going to get it. Uh, say, James. And how average is that a You have to go like the, uh, I don't know, small little contact. Well, I'm going to send that door ahead and close the How about throwing me under the bus? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the same bus is about here in the bus. Yeah, yeah. Buddy guy, straight guy. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I mean, we got things going though. All right. Uh, it's so good to see you. Um, I, I appreciate, um, uh, you know, we, we still continue to do what we can to be safe. However, my, my mask is new. And just a little while ago, right before the confession, I promise you, a piece of it became airborne. And, and I. It was in my mouth. <laughs> I mean, you know, one day we can go back and have some really, really fun mask stories, right? <laughs> but it's probably premature to do that now. Uh, so it's, it's great to see all of you before I forget. I sometimes forget to do this. But uh, our fellowship time will be in the parish house. I don't see any visitors today. Sometimes it gets a bit confusing. Using, I know, but we will walk over to the parish house after church for a time of fellowship. And I hope all of you uh, will join me as we do that. Lella? Yeah. Um, and another reason to go over to the parish house, I'm going to take this off just a minute. Another reason to go over to the parish house this morning is the cafe is trying a new outreach project. And that is to, uh, we've made some soup with a donation of lentils that Bridget somehow acquired. And we have it for you to take and give to someone as an outreach. It isn't to take it home and eat. It is to take and give it to somebody. We have so many sick people out there right now. So if you get there in the first 18 quarts, I've got a pack of ribs you can take too. So pick up a quart of soup, a pack of ribs, and deliver it to somebody who's not feeling well. Thank you. Well, Thomas, Cecilia, all right, um, a lot of good and wonderful things have happened this past week. Cecilia passed her board review for Eagle, so she is officially an Eagle Scout. Currently, she is the youngest um, in Mobile to receive as a female to receive her Eagle Scout. And Baldwin County said, <laughs> I'm going to hear in history. Let's get it right. Um, um, and, and currently, right now, there are only three. So the other two have aged out of Scouts. Um, so they are 18 years old. So she is the youngest female. Eagle Scout. <laughs> yes. Um, probably in the next month or two, we'll have an Eagle Scout ceremony, which all are invited. Okay. So plan on that. Uh, I'll get up there and just speak the thing. There's a lot of other wonderful, wonderful things going on in Scouts right now. Um, our second Eagle Scout, uh, which is our first from our troop, um, she will have her Eagle Scout ceremony here the next Saturday at 2 p.m. So. If you would like to come, that would be great. Um, if you would just RSVP with me, um, just in case, make sure we have enough seats and are COVID protected. So, um, but yes, that will plan on next week. And like I said, the city will have hers in the next month or two once her wonderful mother plans it, not me, yes. Okay. So, some other things going on. The second phase of scouting here at the church will begin next Sunday. So there is a division of scouts. It's not only um, the Trail to Eagle, but also a, a section called Venturing. Venturing uh, has been a while um, here for a long, long time. Not here, but in scouting. Um, in which 1969, they welcomed um, females into it. So females have been a part of this organization for a long time, not just recently with the uh, troops with the Trail of Eagle. So, 
Um, this one is designed for older kids from 14 to their 21st birthday. So it doesn't just stop at 18 years old. So this um, group will be designed around community service. Um, we won't meet as often as a troop does. So we'll meet on the first Sunday um, of each month from six to eight here at the church. And then we will have one Eagle Scout project, well not Eagle Scout project, a service project uh, once a month. And then we'll plan two to three high adventure type camping trips each year. So um, this is not only for um, people who are existing in troops right now, but also uh, new new uh, kids, for instance, that that uh, the scouting program just wasn't for them, whether it was, you know, the troops met during the week, during school night, they met too much, things like that. So this will hopefully help that out to get more youth into scouting. So, but that is, uh, that's coming up. I think our first meeting is next Sunday. So if you know of someone who would like to participate and join venturing, please get up with me. I'll be more than happy to welcome them. So. Also, um, Cecilia, to make her blush again, um, last night we attended the Order of the Arrow Banquet, in which she is now officially the 2022 Five Rivers Chapter Chief. So it's almost like she's in, uh, I'd say, about second in rank for um, the chief here in, in this district. So, and she will, she's planning on attending the National Order of the Arrow Conference this summer. So, a lot of uh, cool things going on. Please keep in mind that if you do have or know of a female between the ages of 11 and 18 that would like to join the troop, we're always open for enrollment. Um, and maybe this coming up year, looking at our third phase of scouting here at the church, um, might be a male's troop. Might be in the work. Okay. So, I think that's it. Oh, yes. Thank you, Ken, for coming to Sue's board of review this last day. So, you were great. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Did someone pop that? No, it happened too long ago that the Thomas came to be very, uh, in a very somber mood and wanted me to pray that. God would do something about the chief in his house, his wife. <laughs> and so I pray, will God do something about the chief in Thomas' house, Bridget? And, and God answered, now he has two chiefs. <laughs> two, Bridget and Cecilia. I'm so proud of Cecilia. And uh, trip 251, uh, which was birthed here uh, at Redeemer just in the middle of COVID, just another example of outreach. So many young women, so many young girls and their families and their parents will be engaged with Redeemer because we share the space with them and they know of our support and they know of our love. And I'm so excited. I am so excited. Uh, I tell the scouts, I've done it for the past 30 years, I tell the scouts, that the saddest day of my life is when I let it go. I, I just walk away from scouting. And I don't know exactly why now, but I walk away from it. And I mean that. That, that was a sad time because you, there comes a point you can't go back and you can't do it again. But I'll tell you one thing. If girls had been involved in scouting when I was 13, <laughs> I would be an eagle today. <laughs> just saying. Sure of it. Oh, I, I get tickled at myself. <laughs> well, thank you. Pick up, pick up some soup. Give it to someone. We had a death in our neighborhood this past week or two, and uh, and I know that the uh, surviving spouse probably would very much appreciate. It. Uh, something like this. And so, uh, you know, I'll be picking up on one or two and share it with the neighbor. So those are the ways that you can continue the outreach. We have so much to be thankful for. So much to be thankful for.
Lord. And I look over here at Brooklyn. Brooklyn, I'm so thankful for you. Um, our youngest acolyte, and um, we just are so happy that we had the privilege of having young minds uh, among us, um, and they bless us over and over again. Thank you, Thomas. And now we turn our attention to the great Thanksgiving. The great Thanksgiving. We gather around the Lord's table. We have all been invited. Everyone is included. That's the good news of God's love and grace. Amen.
thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken to the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error, into truth, out of sin, into righteousness, out of death, into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he said to them, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all. Presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine, we pray to you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood <coughs> of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your cross, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thank 
Thank you. 
peace, the love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.